There are a few types of people who play competitive games online. You've got your everyday, run-of-the-mill, law-abiding citizens. I have done nothing wrong, ever, in my life. You've got your Smurfs. No way. Easy. And you've got the boosted animals. I'm an animal, I'm a boosted animal, I'm a diamond stuck in bronze five. Boosting isn't a new phenomenon. It's actually been happening since the earliest days of gaming. But recently, it's taken on a different meaning. It's not just about solo queue mercenaries elevating low elo plebs. It's about the insecurities created by matchmaking systems that push people down that dark and pitiful path. Fucking <gasps> Boosting is pretty easy to understand on the surface. It refers to someone getting a better player to play on their account in a competitive game in order to increase their online rank, or boost it. This often leads to really terrible players messing up your game by being in way too high a rank for their actual skill. Yeah, I don't know, man. This, this Lee is maybe boosted. Boosted animals. But elo boosting didn't start with high-level League of Legends players taking you to plat. It actually started in universities decades ago. Boosting goes as far back as 1979 in the game Avatar, a thrilling multi-user dungeon that supported a whopping 40 players at a time. Which is actually a pretty crazy number considering it was an era where Sony had just released the first Walkman, Asteroids was considered the greatest game ever made, and everybody was unironically in love with Rod Stewart. Avatar could only be played on the Play-Doh computer operating system, the first ever generalized OS, which was really only available at major universities. The limited amount of gold in each Avatar world meant that people exchanged real money for other players' gold if they were running short. Meanwhile, the severe punishments for dying in-game meant that some players found it easier to just buy a high-level character off another player if they lost theirs, or wanted to get started playing with friends. Of course, that's still a far cry from what we've got today. In the late 90s, real money trading returned with MMOs like Ultima Online, which was also one of the first games to enable gold farming. I love gold! By the time World of Warcraft came out in 2004, an entire industry sprouted up around gold farming, the hottest new form of real money trading. People in China were literally working 84-hour weeks in what basically amounted to WoW sweatshops. There's no sweatshop. No. Excuse me. I gotta go to the can. In time, gold farming evolved into power leveling, but as WoW started to lose traction, the RMT market needed a new target. And with the rise of MOBAs tied to the rapid growth of League of Legends in the early 2010s, power leveling became known as boosting. Boosting can take a couple of forms. You can hand the keys to your account over to another player and let them just win for you. But this approach requires faith that the person boosting your account is going to behave better than your average League of Legends ranked player. There's also the babysitting method, where you pay a better player to queue with you and they carry you through your games. Boosting services aren't cheap either. If you're playing League of Legends, a boost can cost you anywhere from $4 to $15 per win, and anywhere from hundreds to thousands of dollars if you want to get boosted into a significantly higher rank. I need a fucking boost, and I need it now! Meanwhile, boosters themselves are notoriously shady. Game developers don't like people messing with the competitive integrity of their games, so most boosters don't like to reveal themselves for fear of getting banned. On the other hand, there are some players who revel in being the outlaw. Take Jong Apto Sangil, who is currently nursing a 1,000 year ban on his main League of Legends account because of his flagrant attitude toward boosting. Apto was so good at the game that many compared him to the greatest players of all time, but the ban killed both his boosting and his competitive careers. But who gives a shit about making a living as a legit pro player 
when you can have a plate full of money from playing solo queue instead. I am the one, the way you're done. It's easy to understand why a guy like Apto would boost. The whole getting paid to play video games thing is too much to resist sometimes, even if you are playing on the wrong side of the terms of service. But the bigger question is, why on earth would anyone pay to be boosted? If smurfing is high-level players ruining lower elo games, then boosting is the opposite. You're paying to play at a level you clearly do not belong at. What the hell am I doing here? To better understand, we spoke to a few boosters, including an old Halo 3 player who used to boost people to 50. Sometimes, after playing against the very people he boosted and deranking them, they came back to him for another boost. I submit that you are illogical. For a lot of people, boosting stems from wanting a reward. Plenty of games offer rewards for hitting certain ranks, and the vast majority of boosters are paid to get lesser skilled players the exclusive skins. But those guys who come back for another boost after getting beaten by their own booster? They're a special case. As it turns out, we have one of these special cases in our office, an admitted boostee, and he provided insight into his shameful secret as long as his identity remained protected. At first, I was being boosted for the rank rewards, but then I realized I was actually good enough to be in gold. The only games I ever lost were because of my shitty teammates. Your teammates were the problem? Oh yeah, they were garbage. Boosted for sure. So what did you do? Well, I figured if I was good enough to be in gold, then I was clearly good enough to be in plat. So I paid a guy a couple hundred bucks on boostdaddy.biz and he got me there. So how did you end up doing? Not great. It turned out every teammate I had was also boosted and it didn't help that our opponents were smurfs from Challenger. I still think I have what it takes to be in plat though. I just need to get boosted back up again to prove it. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Regardless of the ambitions behind being boosted, the hard truth is that you're still a player in a rank where you don't belong. A lost puppy among wolves. Basically, a boosted animal. God, you are disgusting. A disgusting animal. <laughs> See, even though boosting is relatively common, it's pretty much always against the terms of service of every single game out there. So most players aren't exactly kind to boosters. Are you guys, is this a, are you like a cheater and a boosted duo right now? Is that what's going on? Just play. No, 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 we I think we have a cheater on our team. I think Secret is a cheater. And then Secret? Pig, pig is Pig is, the, is getting boosted. Look at, the, look at their SR. He was, gold, he was gold and silver. Uh, I kind of want to throw the game. If people find out you've been boosted, you're basically a leper. You're scum. All for either being delusional about your skill or tying your personal worth to an imaginary online ranking. Shame! The problem is that while plenty of companies say that they hate boosting, their actions say something different. One of the other boosters we spoke to told us that he didn't receive full payment for a boost he gave a player all the way to Diamond 5. After he wasn't paid, he decided to go to Riot, telling them both that the guy was boosted and that he was his booster. Riot didn't end up doing anything at all, and that booster told us that he's heard of that happening plenty of times. Those people, Pete, those people up there, the rich and the powerful, they do whatever they want. Guys like us, like you and me, they don't care about us. There it is, boosting. A frowned upon act that started in the 70s but continues all the way to today, bringing downtrodden but paying bronze players to places they just don't belong. If I could say one thing to anyone, it's that being boosted is being misunderstood, and you really shouldn't knock it till you try it. Well, thanks again for your time. We appreciate your insight. No problem. You're sure no one's gonna know it's me? Your secret is safe with us. Boost is that shitty drink that people drink as a supplement, right? Do you want to talk about shitty drinks and the shittiest drink known as 
orbits. Do you remember orbits? Or how, just orbits? Things. Orbits is like the most fucking late 90s thing you could think of. Yo, it was a precursor to bubble tea. Bubble tea was like... <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. That's just like a random theory. Yeah.